Tell us about some of the most hairy experiences you've ever had. I've, I've, to be honest with you, when I first went to America, I thought uh, people got shot like uh, on street corners and bars. <laughs> Didn't want to get down that street because that looked a bit dodgy or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I actually uh, was drinking in a bar which was near my hotel. And this guy says, you're English? I says, yeah. He says, how you finding it over here? I says, I like it. I says, I'm just a little bit wary though, you know. Because, um, what the TV star skin, which and everything was, you know. So I'm, I'm expecting to get mugged any minute. And this guy was English. And he says, do you know I was felt like that? And he says, I was there five years, never saw any trouble whatsoever, never. He says, chill man, he says, really comfortable. So he says, but one day I was in, I was in Texas and the bar freaking erupted. Just out of nowhere, nothing. <laughs> The bar erupted, there was tables going, there was chairs going, there was glasses going, there was the, just the biggest mayhem ever and I thought somebody's going to get shot here so I just hit the floor, I went under a table and stayed there. Anyway, when all the dust settled, he says they got hold of these two guys who had had this big ruckus and uh, one was a Man U fan and one was a Liverpool fan in Texas arguing over football, they were both English. <laughs> So he says. So, so it when you're in America, America he says, "Don't don't worry about anything." How old were you at the time? How old? Oh was... God, no, that was my first, very first um, time in America. So I was 76. I was May 76, and uh, yeah, I was in Chicago. So I sort of relaxed after that one. But I've had some really um, close calls in, in, in America, but nothing life threatening. But the the the, the sort of like uh, I don't know how to call this. Um, uh, Close shave with something disastrous was when I was with Keb Dodge, which <laughs> whenever you're with Keb Dodge, something disastrous can happen, I can assure you. But we was, uh, I got a phone call one day and uh, Rip Lay said to me, this is a guy I was talking about earlier who, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, tried to pass me off as Cliff Richard's famous guitarist. And uh, <laughs> he, he said, look, I, I've got this warehouse full of records, I'm, I'm about to sell it, did you want to look at it before I sell it? I said, yeah, that would be great. So I ran Keb up. We'd already been on a trip to New York together and got on really well. I said, do you want to come with me? He says, I'm going to go in two weeks. And so he says, yeah, I'll come with you. So we got a flight really quickly. We flew to California <clears throat> and went to see Rip's warehouse. And if you can imagine, uh, Rip Lay had so many records. This warehouse was nowhere near the warehouse that I knew. This is another warehouse that he had dug away. And I don't think anybody had been through the records. And so anyway, we, <laughs> we opened the door and it was just a hundred count box of records, about that big, and that square. And it just went from the floor with uh, one pile and it went straight up to the ceiling, which would have been about 15 stories high of hundred counts. So Kev says, how are we going to do this? I said, I'll tell you what we're going to do systematically. I'm going to start here. You tip out, I look. You put back, you tip out, I look. And it worked great. So. Because most of it, I can look through a hundred records quicker than what I can pull out and yes. put back. Yeah. Uh, and and also when you're pulling out and putting back, you, you get nicks on your fingers and everything. So as a team, we work really well. And I'd been in there four days, and I was starting to get really bad um, pains in the back of my neck and my shoulders. And I started to seize up, basically. Is that from looking down? And yeah, yeah, looking yeah, down, I, doing, I, doing this, and I was looking, looking, looking. And, and Keb was like a taskmaster. To, uh, apparently in the Northern Soul uh, uh, film where he was teaching him how to dance, yeah. he had a stick and he used to whack the back of the legs. He said, oh, get it right. He was <laughs> like that with me in this warehouse. He was going, come on, boy, stop weakening, or you're weak. And he, he was slapping me around the head with that really gruff Scottish accent of his. And he was just driving me on and on. But about the fifth day, I, I was done for, and, and and I don't know whether you know, but uh, Keb's uh, like a master on uh, uh, martial arts. Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, he says, I know what's wrong with you. You, I need to play with your pressure points. <laughs> so I, 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 I said, what do you mean? He says, well, the pressure point for your neck and your back and your shoulders is just behind the knee. So he got his knuckle like this and started drilling it into the back of my knee. So I said, it's doing no good, Kev. So he says, no, relax, boy, relax, 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 boy. So he went down on his knees, and we were sort of like buried in these boxes. 
and he was down on his knees and he's drilling his knee into there, uh, his, his finger into the back of my knee, and it really hurt. And I was going, whoa, 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 like this. Ripley, at that point, walked <laughs> through the door and all he I could see <laughs> was Keb's head going backwards and forwards, me standing up, <laughs> going, whoa, 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 whoa. And he looked into he looked into the warehouse and went, Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs>